Okay, hello everybody. Uh, here we go with the five mother sauces. The five mother sauces are the sauces that every soup and every sauce is made from. So the first one here is velouté. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm playing around with some parsley, bay leaves, and thyme. Those three things are called a bouquet garni. You, you're going to hear that a lot in all the sauces, well, except for hollandaise and tomato. But anyway, uh, you know, it is a basic item in the kitchen. It's a bouquet garni. It's bay leaf, parsley, and thyme. You're also going to hear a lot about a mirepoix. Mirepoix is onion, celery, and carrots. However, if you're in Cajun country, they call it a trinity. And what it is is onion, celery, and peppers. Uh, they don't add the carrot to it in the trinity. It's uh, onion, celery, and peppers. But for us, it's mirepoix. It's onion, celery, and carrots. You're going to hear that a lot also. Those two things are basics. I mean, that's the basic stuff. Okay, in that pot there, I have two chicken thighs. And I'm going to add the carrots to it. I'm going to add the celery and the onion. So, in other words, it's a mirepoix. It's going into the, into the chicken parts. And we're going to boil that on the stove for a couple hours. Um, usually what I do is I go through the fridge and I find the oldest stuff, you know, the oldest carrots, the oldest celery, you know, that onion there was in a plastic bag I had cut earlier, and I put it in the bag, you know, uh, the vegetables there are not going to be used after the stock is done, so they don't have to look pretty, they don't have to be fresh, you know, the, the celery can be w wilted, same thing with the carrots, you know, you could have like carrots made of rubber, you know, and just throw them in there, it's they're not going to be used. Actually, the carrots here are going to be used, but uh, the onion and celery aren't. So don't worry about it looking good. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to put in the bouquet garni, which is the parsley, the bay leaves, and the thyme. Now, if I had fresh thyme, I would tie those all together. I would, uh, the parsley and the thyme and the bay leaves, I'd make a a small little package out of it, you know, uh, uh, you know, wrap it up in string. But I didn't have fresh thyme, so I can't do that. I do have fresh bay leaves. I have four bay leaf trees outside, and um, what I do is when I trim the trees in the in the winter, I bring in the leaves and I put them in the dehydrator, and uh, man, it works really nice. Okay, anyway. Now here's the chicken that the, the, the stock has boiled now for two hours. So I took the chicken meat off of the bones. I broke the bones and I put them back into the stock. All right, the stock is still on the stove. It's still boiling with the mirepoix and the uh, bouquet garni. So what I'm going to do is here, I didn't want to make this video about the chicken. I wanted to make it about the velouté. So... But I wanted to give you an example of what you could do with velouté. So what I'm making is, I'm making chicken croquettes. Uh, I'm not sure if the queen is eating chicken croquettes today, but I guarantee you at some point she has eaten chicken croquettes. So you can eat, you can have lunch just like the queen. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm grinding up the chicken. If you don't have a grinder, use a uh, meat, I mean a uh, food processor. If you don't have either one of those, then just chop it by hand, but you got to get it really small. So you want to you wanna basically mince it. So if you're chopping it by hand, you're going to be there for a while chopping, you know, choppy, choppy. Okay, anyway, I'm, I'm grinding it. So that's, you know, what I'm doing. Okay, I'm also going to grind the carrots from the stock. I'm going to grind those up in it too. And... Um, then we're going to mix it. These are called croquettes. Okay, you can make croquettes out of anything. You could use shrimp. Uh, well, I've never seen beef. But who knows? You, can, you probably could do it. I, I, I don't know. 
But anyway, um, there, there's the carrots from the stock. They're ground up in there too. Okay, now I'm also going to add to this, I'm going to add salt and pepper and um, uh, one egg, some flour, some breadcrumbs, and some of the stock from the, from the chicken bones. Um, you know, you could make these any way you want. You could add nutmeg to it. Uh, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's up to you. It's your taste, whatever you want. Uh, I happen to know the queen does not like nutmeg, so forget the nutmeg. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, there's also, oh, in the stock also I added a little bit of garlic. I know you didn't see that, but the there was a little bit of garlic added in. Uh, okay, now there's the roux. That's what you're going to need to thicken the, the, the uh, stock is roux. The roux and the stock are going to make the velouté. Velouté is not named for the item that it's extracted from. In other words, chicken velouté, yes, it's chicken, right. But velouté itself is named because of the thickness of the sauce and the simplicity. You know, there's nothing added in here. There's no milk. There's no nothing I mean it's just it's just thickened chicken stock that's it that's all it is you could have a shrimp velouté which would be you know of course shrimp um, so anyway the name velouté doesn't come from the item that it's that it's uh, you know derived from it, it it means it's the thickness of the sauce it's a very thin sauce and like I said before, it's kind of weak. You know, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's just a pretty plain sauce. Um, it's used for a lot of things. You know, of course, making another sauce. You know, you can, like for instance, if you added champagne to it, well, now you have a champagne sauce, a champagne velouté. You know, um, if you added white wine, well, then you have a white wine velouté. You know, whatever whatever you're adding to it is what it becomes. Okay, so there's the stock, and I just strained it. That little black cup there is a strainer, very fine strainer. And um, now I'm going to put it back on the stove, and uh, we're going to let it boil so it'll thicken. And um, then we're going to add the roux. See, now look, if... If I wanted to, oh, I'm adding that into the chicken. Uh, a couple, I don't know, four, five, six uh, spoons of uh, stock into the chicken. Um, now, if we wanted to, I could reduce that stock all the way down to where it would begin to thicken on its own. But no one does that today in in. I mean, you know, maybe in a fine dining restaurant, they will reduce items down to, uh, you know, to where they begin to get thick. But that's very rare. I mean, they, you know, Escoffier, who I mentioned before, uh, he is the, fa the father of modern cooking. That's what they name him as. And his big thing was reduction. So, in other words, if, if that chicken... The, that I just, if that stock was reduced down to a sauce, that would be, you know, something Escoffier, uh, you know, wanted everyone to do. He want, you know, he he was big on reduction. But I'll tell you, reduction takes so long, it's, people don't really do it anymore. I mean, imagine if you have a 200 gallons of chicken stock. You know how long that would take to reduce that down to a sauce? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it would take a couple days, you know. And like I said, there's not many places that do it anymore. It's just not done. All right, anyway, here's, I'm adding some chicken. I mean, uh, I'm adding some celery and parsley and onion to the chicken. Uh, that chicken, by the way, came off the bones of the, the two pieces of chicken that I put into the stock. I really didn't want this video to be about the chicken. You know, I wanted it to be about the velouté. 
But, like I said, I also wanted to show you what you could use a volute for. And, you know, so I'm going to try not to spend too much time on the, on the chicken. But, you know, it looks like we're going to have to spend some time on it. Okay, in the meantime, the sauce is boiling now on the stove. You know, it's, it's still cooking away. What I did was I took the meat off the bones and then I, I broke the bones, you know, I cracked them so that the marrow could come out and uh, we get a nice chicken stock out of it. All right, so anyway, now in that bowl there, I've got the ground chicken, the ground carrots, chopped celery, chopped onion, and chopped parsley. Oh, and some stock. I don't know how much stock. You know, I'm not really measuring anything. I, I'm just putting it all together. Uh, I'm going to add to it one egg and flour and breadcrumbs. There goes the egg. Now, you want to whip the egg before you start mixing it in. So I keep it right in that little corner there. And, uh, you know, I'm smashing it up. You know, rather than dirty up another bowl and whip it separately forget it just do it right in there uh, okay I also added salt and pepper to this and some garlic um, okay now we're gonna put in a little bit of flour and some breadcrumbs what we want is we want this to stick together so we can make these little pear shapes croquettes are well there's a you know a bunch of different uh, ways that you can form them or shape them you know I've seen them as pears I've seen them as apples uh, cherries you know they they just they play around with the shapes all right there went a little bit more of the stock stock went back onto the stove all we have to do now for the velouté is just to add the roux, and it's done. I mean, it's a very simple thing. All right, there goes some breadcrumbs. Uh, let me see. Come on, hurry up here. Um, yeah, uh, croquettes are usually served as a lunch. They're not really a big, hearty dinner type thing, you know. So they usually do them as lunch. And, um, all right, so there it is. There's the stuff. I don't know how to tell you. There, you can see it. You know, it, it, it all sticks together. I'm trying to think of something that it's, uh, that, it, that would remind you of, uh, croquettes. I can't. Anyway. Uh, here we go. Well, I'm going to try to keep them in pear shapes, you know, like a pear. Big on the bottom, skinny on top. Okay, and I'll show you why at the end here. They really do look nice. Uh, like I said, the queen, I don't know if she's having these for lunch today, but I guarantee you she's had them. <laughs> so if you want to eat like the queen, there you go. Make yourself some croquettes. All right. Again, just try to try to uh, keep them in a pear shape. Okay, this should be the end. Uh, three of them. I think I made three. Um, the velouté is on the stove. The stock is on the stove. There it is. Okay, and I'm gonna add some uh, some roux to it. And we're going to start making it thick. But not real thick. It's a very thin sauce. All right, here comes some roux. Now, if you don't know exactly what roux is, uh, I have a video on roux. Hey, wait a minute. I just noticed I'm getting fat. Holy moly. Man, look at that. Oh, man, I'm a blimp. Damn. I better start working on that. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, if you don't know what roux is, take a look at the video. It'll explain everything to you. You have to have roux. 
I'm telling you, especially now that we're making the mother sauces, you got to have roux. There's just no doubt about it. You won't be able to do it without roux. Okay, so. Man, that t-shirt's dirty, too. How did I get so dirty and fat? Man. All right, anyway. Uh, there you go. It's coming to. We got a little bit more roux to go in, and um, and that'll be the end of that. And that's velouté. I mean, it's just that simple. There's nothing to it. You know, if I wasn't making the croquettes, this video would be long over by now. You know, because of the um, the simplicity of velouté. You know, I mean, there's <laughs> there's just nothing to it. It's very simple. Uh, you know, you put some chicken base. You don't even need real chicken. You can use chicken bouillon if you want. You know, it's up to you. You don't really need a mirepoix. You don't have to have it. You could do chicken bouillon and thicken it up, and boom, you have a chicken velouté, just like that. Uh, what I'm showing you is the basic... This is what you would see if you were going to, to cooking school. This is what you would see. They would tell you to use a mirepoix and a bouquet garni, and they would tell you to boil the chicken to make a stock and then thicken it with roux. That's it. You know, but like I say, if you want to do it really simple, all you need is some chicken bouillon and uh, and water and roux. That's all you need. Um, by the way, if you're going to use, well, I call it chicken base. You know, in in restaurants and hotels, they call it chicken base and beef base and ham base and clam base. You know, they don't call it bouillon. But anyway, if you're going to use that stuff, try to find a restaurant uh, supply house near your near your house. Restaurant supply place. You know, over here we have a place called GFS. It's Gordon Food Service, and they have the best bases. It's, it's a paste. It's not a powder. The paste are the good ones. The paste. They are the good bases. Um, uh, anyway, that's what I use. You know, when, when I don't have any stock, you know, I'm not going to go through all the trouble of making a stock if I want something quick. Then I use chicken base. And, uh, and it's the paste, not the powder. The paste really is the best. All right, so let's get back to me being a fat. Oh man, I can't believe this. Whoo! I can't even see my toes. This is the first time I've seen my toes in months. <laughs> okay, Valute, come on, man, keep going there. You're almost done. All right, here we go. Here we go. A little bit more roux. See, I'm I'm famous for putting in too much roux. I really am. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I just use too much. I don't have enough patience to wait for the roux to cook. You know what I'm saying? So what I'll do is I'll just add more roux. It doesn't look right. I add more roux, and then before I know it, it's way too thick. So you have to be careful with roux. You know, it's a, it's a learning process. Play around with it. Put a little bit in and let it boil. Oh, that's another thing. Once you use roux, you have to let it boil. It has to boil. There's, I mean, it, it, it's just crazy. If you don't let it boil, forget it. What will happen is the roux will just settle to the bottom of the pan or the pot, and uh, it's a one big giant mess. So you have to let the item boil. Okay, there's all the roux. By the way, I have a big container of roux in my freezer. You know, when I make it, I make it, you know, two or three pounds of butter. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, last time I think I used one pound. I think. Yeah, I think I did. That was the video I made. I think it's one pound of butter. You know what? If I didn't upload those videos to YouTube, I lost them. Because I lost my one of my external hard drives kind of stopped working and uh, I had all my videos on that hard drive so I'm going to have to send that thing in somewhere and get all that stuff out but anyway 
um, there is the velute and it's just bubbling away now like I said if I wanted a champagne velute I add some champagne to it that's all I mean it, it's very simple you want white wine you add some white wine to it uh, how about some lobster yeah you could put some lobster meat in there although it would be better if you made the stock from seafood you know like shrimp shells and maybe some fish heads or whatever you have and then strain it all and then put the lobster in but you could put lobster in chicken velute I mean why not you know they both taste good so okay so here we go now we're going back to the to the croquettes all right now what you do is you here's what I did I put the croquettes under running water but very slow running water I just passed them underneath it okay then I rolled them in the breadcrumbs and I threw them in the deep fryer now you can see I have a lemon grapes and peas as garnish okay so I'm gonna take out the croquettes here they come I'm gonna use the velouté as a sauce just you know chicken velouté that's it whoa oh, got away from me oh by the way in 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 the um, in the croquettes there's a piece of spaghetti that I stuck in to make it look like the stem of the pear. Wait, you'll see. I, I have a, a good view of it coming up. You'll see what it looks like. All right, so here we have the, the uh, croquettes coming on here in a minute. Come on, there we go. Okay, all righty then. Woohoo. All right, now we're just going to drown them in uh, the velouté, which is right here, coming in. All right. Now, I noticed there was a couple little lumps in the velouté, which means that the roux did not cook all the way in. So I'm going to stir it here with the whip just to, uh, just to you know, get rid of the, the lumps. All right. They're gone now, so here we go. Okay. All right. Now this velouté, you can do anything with it. You could add, you could add um, dill. Okay. For example, you could add dill and white wine, or dill and champagne, and and boom, you have a new sauce. You know, it's just not chicken velouté anymore. Now it's dill champagne dill sauce you know or, or whatever uh, there's a there's a million things you could add to this that would make it a different item okay like I say these are used mostly for lunch as you can see this would be a, a light lunch you know serve it with some uh, I don't know garlic croutons or you know garlic bread or something and boom you got it made the Queen will be over every other week to eat, cro uh, to eat croquettes. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to give you a side view of what they look like here in a minute. Uh, but anyway, that's velouté, okay? Everybody got it? It's very simple. It's chicken stock that is thickened with roux. There you go. And there's your little pears. Okay, and uh, that's about it. I got to go. I got to eat. <laughs>